This will be a tutorial on depth first search, including what it does, how it works, an image demonstration, pseudocode, and a running time explanation. So this section will go over how it works very quickly. I don't expect you to understand how the entire algorithm works from going over this once. We'll come back to this later and you'll get the idea. But for now, quickly, this algorithm traverses a connected component of a graph. From a starting vertex, we traverse through the graph, through unexplored vertices, in an arbitrary order. Each time we visit a vertex, we mark it explored. So we have a starting vertex, and we're exploring from there through edges to unexplored vertices. When we reach a dead end, no unexplored vertex can be reached from where we're at. We use the backtracking technique. We back up to the previous vertex and check if there are any other edges that lead to unexplored vertices. If so, we'll follow those paths. We'll repeat this process until we've backtracked all the way back to the start vertex and checked all of its edges. So this is called depth first because we're going down one path as far as it takes us and then when we reach a dead end, we back up and see if there are any alternate paths. An analogy is we're in a maze. We want to explore the entire maze. So we're at the start. We have a ball of yarn that we tie to a nail at the start, and we unravel it as we go. We go as far as we can. When we hit a dead end, we back up to our last fork in the road or whatever it might be. Last time we went left. This time we go right. Let's see how far we can go. If we hit a dead end, we back up and try the next one. So this will continue until we've backed up all the way back to the start. After that's done, we will have explored every vertex that it's possible to explore uh, in this connected part of the graph. Here's an image demonstration. So red circles are vertices, as you might imagine. Uh, green lines are edges. These blue arrows are showing where we backtracked and purple is notes showing the first vertex we visit the second and this kind of shows the direction that we've traveled these little arrows so we go from one that's the start so we'll go in any arbitrary direction this will be the second two we'll go to three we'll go to four we'll go to five we'll go to six we're just going straight kind of as far as we can go let's just see where we can go so now we're at six so from six the only place we can go, let's try this edge. Where does this edge lead? It goes to four. We've already been to four. This has been marked explored. Each time we visit an edge, we mark it explored before we leave. So we know we've already been here. So don't check that one. Uh, let's see where else we can go from six. Hmm, we can't go anywhere. We can go to this place we've already been. There's nothing else. We'll have to backtrack. Backtrack to five. That's what this blue arrow means. Now we're at five. Uh, is there anywhere we can go we haven't been? No, we've already been everywhere. We'll have to backtrack. From four, is there anywhere we can go we haven't been? Well, we've already seen this edge. We've already seen this edge. We've already seen this edge uh, and associated vertex. We've already seen two. The only place we haven't been is down this edge into seven. So we follow that. And this is seven because it's the seventh vertex that we visited. From here, the only edge we haven't traversed is this one that leads to one, and we're done. We've seen every vertex there is to see. So we went one, two, three, four, five, six, went, tried to go to four, we've already been there, so we backtracked five, four, but from we didn't have to backtrack through three and two because from four we found a place that we could go that we hadn't been. And uh, that was seven. Then we went to one. We'd already been there. Let's look at the pseudocode. So the depth first search function, function accepts a graph G and a vertex V. The first thing we're going to do is label our start vertex V as explored. Because we're, we're there, we visited it. Now for all edges E in G dot incident edges V, so in the graph G, all incident edges of V, which are all the edges that have V as an endpoint, 
So for every edge attached to our starting vertex, if E is unexplored, we haven't explored that edge yet, W is going to be the other endpoint vertex. So yeah, we'll call it W. And now if W is unexplored, if that vertex uh, connected through an edge to our start vertex, if that's unexplored, we'll label E a discovery edge. And then we will recurse using depth first search, provided the graph, and now we'll use W, which is our new node. Else, we'll label E a back edge because it's not showing us a new vertex, although it is a new edge. And so that's a back edge. Um, so it means that it's a new edge, a new green edge. Haven't been on this edge yet. This six edge hadn't been hadn't been to it yet between six and four, but it brought us to a vertex that we'd already explored. So we'll label that a back edge. But from one to two, for example, that's just new. Uh, we'll label it a discovery edge. And so we'll recurse, and uh, this recursion is how we'll continue through and um, how, we'll, how we'll back up. So the running time, uh, we're going to explore each edge at most twice. Uh, so each edge, we can only access it once from this side, once from this side. We'll explore each vertex at most degree V times, where the degree of a vertex V is the number of edges which have vertex V as an endpoint. In other words, in the worst case, the number of times we traverse a vertex is the number of edges incident on that vertex. The only way we get to a vertex is through an edge, so the number of times that we can traverse a vertex is the number of edges that are connected to it. Therefore, we have a running time of v plus e, where v is the number of vertices in the graph and e is the number of edges.